Okay, we're going to continue on um, with our geometry readiness test, and we're going to solve for this what we call quadratic equation. It's a quadratic because of that term right there. That's what we call x squared. A few techniques how to do this, but one of them is to move the 144 on the other side, since this is what we call a binomial. There's only two terms. And the only thing left to do is to square root both sides, so I have x equals, don't forget, plus and minus 12. Okay, that means there's two solutions. One is positive 12, the other one is negative 12. All right, let's take a look at, the, look at the next one. The next one's not a binomial, it's what we call a trinomial. There are three terms in there, and again, it is a quadratic, but this has a totally different technique. The technique I'm going to use here is uh, like a little bit of a puzzle. I'm going to put the 12 there and a negative 7 down here. And I'm going to try to think of two numbers where if I multiply them together, I get 12. But if I added these two numbers, I get negative 7. What are these two numbers? Well, I'm thinking about negative 3 and negative 4. Why is that helpful? Because now we're going to break apart this trinomial, and we're going to do that by factoring. And what I do is, uh, I'm going to write x minus one of the factors, 3, and the, the other one is x minus 4. So I have two, what we call factors now. That's one number multiplied by another number, and that's equal to 0. Why is that helpful? It's because now I have this concept. What is this concept? I have a number times another number right there, and that's equal to zero. But well, what does that really mean? Well, we can assume then that one of these numbers are zero, or possibly both numbers are zero. So the problem really stops right here, and we create two mini little problems based upon that assumption of these two numbers being zero, or potentially being zero. So that means we can solve for the one on the left, and we get x is 3, and we solve for the one on the right, and we get x is 4, and voila, those are our two solutions to that quadratic equation. There's a lot of steps involved in those, and they're pretty difficult for Algebra 1 students, but uh, with a lot of practice, you can uh, become quite uh, proficient at factoring and solving quadratics with that technique. Okay, let's look at number 9. Well, here's another quadratic, um, and it looks like it's a trinomial, but it's actually a binomial. Why is that? It's because I can move all the numbers onto one side, and we only have two different types of terms. So, using the technique we did a few moments ago, we're going to square root both sides, and don't forget plus and minus. But when we simplify the square root of 28, we actually get, whoops, excuse me, I wrote that wrong. Uh, that is going to be 2 times the square root of 7. And why is it 2 times the square root of 7? Is because when we simplify radicals, we're trying to break them up into factors where one of the numbers is what we call a perfect square. Because we can simplify perfect squares, that's going to be 2 radical 7. So that's why my answer is plus and minus 2 radical 7. Okay, we have one more in here, and this is what we call a systems of equation. And why is it a system of equations? Because simply, there's just two equations in here. We got one equation and then another. And if you take notice, each equation has two variables. So what I would like to do is use a technique called addition. And how do we do that? Is we stack the two equations on top of one another. And we're going to try to add them together and try to get stuff to cancel. Uh, this technique is also called elimination. You can see why here in a second. If I have uh, two terms in here, one is negative 11z and one is positive 11z, notice they cancel or they eliminate. And that's what we're trying to get here. We're trying to get one of the variables to disappear. But when I look at the x's all lined up and the y's all lined up, nothing's disappearing. So what I have to do is I have to look at the equations and I have to, have to, have to kind of manipulate them in such a way so something will cancel. So what I do here is I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 2x. And why would I do that is because when I multiply through by 10x, I get this new equation right here. 
And if you look carefully at the X's, for example, the X's now cancel. This is great news because now I have Y equals to negative 16 when I add those numbers up or add those columns up. Well, I'm halfway done. Uh, why am I halfway done is because we're trying to find two answers in here. One solution is for Y, the other one is for X. And how do I find the solution for X now is I take this uh, solution we have for Y and we plug it into either equation, the blue equation or the green one. It doesn't matter, you will get the same exact answer. And I substitute in negative 16 for what I know about Y. And since y is negative 16, I know x is 32 equals 5, and x turns out to be negative 27. So I've written the answer in two different formats. One format is in coordinate form. I write x comma y. And the other solution, the other type of solution is I just state the answers um, uh, like so. I, I said x is negative 27 and y is negative 16. Okay, let's take a little break.